not here, just you two. Have cool. Fun. All right. Awesome. So let's start by getting you to give your name and title. So I've got it on the front end of things. Sure. I'm Amr Bonsal. I'm one of the uh, assistant professors of medicine at the University of Pittsburgh. Okay. Um, let's just try and fire through some. How does this conference help you? Uh, the conference makes it um, more relevant for me to tailor the way I speak and the way I share concepts, not just with fellow clinicians, but with patients um, and nurses and sort of a whole team of multidisciplinary of, of a multidisciplinary care team. So that's really important to be able to sort of alter the way you speak so that it's relevant for a broader audience. Um, and in a more general sense, <laughs> Why is patient involvement so important in what you do? I think if there's not buy-in from the patients, it's really hard to implement a care plan. And if patients don't understand, if they don't trust, and if they don't truly have a sense of, this is what's right for me, it's going to be really hard to take care of them in a comprehensive way. Um, what's your CKD story? What, what sort of got you into the whole world of CKD and obviously like kidney nephrology, et cetera? Well, I was really interested in, in nephrology since I was a medical student. I have an engineering background, so sort of the numbers part of nephrology, the quantitative part of it, the acid-base part of it, is what got me interested uh, in medical school. And then as I went through residency and, and fellowship, I realized exactly how uh, sick many of our patients can be. And so that's what led me towards you know, getting more training in palliative care. Um. What do you see is the most important issue for us to tackle? I'm quite biased, um, I would say. Um, from my perspective, m I really feel strongly about providing better care for patients with advanced age, elderly patients, and I feel that the patient experience um, in terms of symptoms and in terms of quality of life, not so much in terms of hospital metrics per se, I feel those are really critical to improve in renal care. And I think if we improve those, we will see, hopefully, um, happier patients and healthier patients. Um, and I think um, that's really important for us as a country to, to tackle quite aggressively in kidney care. What would be the ideal situation? Um, the ideal situation would be that everyone can have a lengthy conversation with providers that they trust. Um, and time is really a limiting factor in being able to talk to patients in a comprehensive way. So, um, and that sort of dovetails on this idea of being resource limited. So how do you invest more time and more energy and more effort into patient care when the system itself is resource limited? So the ideal situation is, is probably hard to achieve because we have, the reality is there are limited resources. So I think training providers to be more efficient in their communication is probably um, the ideal scenario for, for improving kidney care. And that, that goes beyond just nephrologists. It includes medical specialists of all kinds. So cardiologists, oncologists, we all take care of really sick patients. So improving their efficiency and their ability to talk to patients in a limited time, I think, is sort of the ideal scenario. Um. Um, what drives you? What keeps you going with all this? Um, this idea to do better. I don't want to sound like Atul Gawande's book, but I think the idea to, to do better uh, every day is kind of what drives me, what drove me to do initially to do biomedical research. And then eventually um, my interests pivoted towards palliative care. Um, and so this, this idea of um, believing in, in the community, doctors and nurses are some of my favorite people, and I know that we can do better. So that's really what drives me. Where are the opportunities that you see for the better delivery of healthcare? Um, I think there are so many ways. I think public and health policy is important to to address. We have sort of a lot of systemic issues that uh, could be um, improved to enhance prevention. Um, it's very, prevention is not quite as interesting um, as treatment, and that's the way our system is set up. But focusing more on preventing chronic disease is important. And that's, I see that as a very uh, healthcare and public policy sort of front. And uh, the other idea is sort of patient doctor communication. I really feel that patients don't have, often don't have a solid um, 
understanding that that their clinicians heard them um, or that they had their concerns addressed. I think changing that is, is a vital part of healthcare moving forward. How would you do that? How would you get the better communication done? I think, I think um, sort of shifting some of the, the, um, the time that we spent in medical training, um, it's very important to impart knowledge onto our trainees so that they understand differential diagnosis and treatment um, and medication dosages. But at some point, I think it's very important to sort of really set some time aside for communication because the acquisition of knowledge and communication skills is kind of a lifelong trait. But I just don't think we do a good enough job in medical education on focusing on communication at the right time and, and figuring out and collaborating with our educators about when they think is the ideal time is a good way to move forward. That's perfect. All Thank right. you. Well, how about just, um, yeah. have you learned anything? And have you been involved since last year? In this? Yeah. Oh, okay. First year. How do you feel about the Christianity Care doing this kind of This is wonderful. This is uh, really near and dear to, to what I do, and so I'm really privileged to be here. And I think uh, Christianity Care doing this is really a remarkable step forward. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Cool. Be quick and simple.